Hello everyone, it's Greg from Edinburgh Renaissance Fencing Academy here for another online fencing tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is a direct follow-on from the previous two that uh, I have produced. So please refer back to tutorial 11 and tutorial 12 as necessary um, to complement what we're going to talk about in today's tutorial. Uh, so we're going to return to the use of offhand weapons in combination with the Grassi's rapier. Uh, I will once again be using the dagger as the most common example of an offhand weapon, but everything I'm going to show today could be replicated with minimal adaptation um, for the use of a buckler, a shield or a cloak in the offhand. Okay. So uh, a very brief reminder, in uh, tutorial 12, we focused on the mechanics for recovering uh, safely and efficiently from an attack. So uh, I'll put my dagger down for a minute. That was the idea that when we're at an extended attack position, that when we move away from our opponent, we need to cover ourselves somehow with the blade of our sword. This this, uh, whatever it is we want to do. Okay, so we need to move the blade between us and our opponent as we are extracting ourselves from the attack stance. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we looked at how the basic stance and posture of the Grassi's rapier is modified when you're holding an offhand weapon. So from the basic guard stance, we actually turn our torso more square on so that the offhand weapon is brought forward, extended, so that it gives maximum coverage. And the idea is that when you attack, you can use the dagger or whatever to cover the weaknesses in your defense. So quite simply, today's tutorial is about combining these two ideas together. How do you recover in rapier and dagger? So uh, quite simply, you should try to retreat or recover uh, using the offhand weapon to protect yourself, to cover, to parry. Okay? So uh, quite simply, we will take our guard and just very slowly and deliberately put ourselves into the extended attack posture. So this is a stoccata. Start with this is the most common attack. So here we are at the extension. So. I need to get this in between where my attacker is threatening and me. And I also need to free or extract my sword at the same time. So it'll look something like this. Okay, so the salient point here is I'm sort of pushing with this shoulder and consequently with the hip and the torso which support it as I'm pulling with this shoulder, the arm and the other parts that are attached to it, in order to get this weapon into position forwards while we free this weapon by extracting it backwards. So as always, this uh, torso mechanic is key. So from the extended stoccata position, I push with my left shoulder and pull with my right. And the idea is this will have parried, covered or otherwise gathered the opponent's weapon and notice that my sword is now down low where it's out of the road. This allows me then to make a counter riposte in a very direct and efficient manner. Of course the recovery could be done with any number of different steps. Uh, so for example, for the attack position I might want to recover off in this direction with a circular step, in which case I'm pulling my sword back, keeping my dagger forwards. Or I might want to go off in this direction somehow with a slope step, so from the attack position over here. There's also the possibility in the paired weapons combination to recover uh, with a full step backwards. There are tactical reasons for this. Recovering with a half step allows you to stay in at narrow measure. Recovering with a full step will return you to wide measure. Uh, this would be dangerous in single rapier because if I pull my body all the way back here, 
I am now completely exposed and my defence, my blade is over down here where it's not protecting me. But the dagger in hand from the stockata position, this is actually quite a safe and defensive position here and well protected by the dagger. So I encourage you to experiment. Remember, push forward with both weapons into a good, solid, grounded attacking stance and then practice recovering, recovering, recovering. And then slowly start to make it a bit more mobile, attack, cover, back to guard, attack, Cover, back to guard, attack, cover, back to guard. Be a bit more proactive with the parries as you get into it. And that's basically it. Um, if you can get to be efficient with these movements, if you can condition your body and condition your reflexes to perform them accurately and correctly, um, this is a very, very uh, tight and secure way of fencing. Um, we have both weapons to keep ourselves covered. Um, of course, we can always be threatening with a repulse, primarily with the sword, but you could also repulse with a blow with the dagger as well. This is a very versatile system. As far as today's tutorial goes, um, we are combining, however, these two key principles. Keep the offhand weapon forwards with the use of this flank, uh, shoulder, side and hip, and keep yourself covered as you recover from attacks. So, um, give it a go. Uh, of course, you can apply the same recovery from the end of a cut position as well. So mix up all the principles as you can and uh, yeah, see how you get on with that. That's it for today. I'll return shortly with another tutorial. Thank you everyone. See you next time.